by popular demand. History Daddy's got his own YouTube channel! Yes, that's right, I'm on YouTube in the hopes of making my love for history and my ability to talk about history and make jokes about history to you guys a permanent thing and, you know, uh, th I, I, this could go anywhere. But yeah, for those of you that don't know, my name is History Daddy um, and I make history videos on TikTok, little history skits and some other skits as well if I'm in the mood. Um, and I, I, I talk about history in a comedic fashion. Ooh. I, I, I just do short comedy stuff. And I want the ability to talk about stuff more in depth. And maybe throw some skits inside videos. And just just have fun with it. Because at the end of the day, you know, I'm talking about human history. Which is a large, never-ending void of constant, eternal suffering. However, uh, now we're here on YouTube, um, we've got less chance to talk about stuff more in depth and um, hopefully I can give you a few laughs along the way, throw in a few skits and yeah, to be honest, let's just let's just get this YouTube ball rolling um, so I can just skip to the part where I have a boxing match with Jake Paul. Uh, this is, is, is covering a topic I didn't know was a thing until I started making videos about my favourite thing in history, which is Ancient Greece. Uh, I'm I anyone who knows me I, um, knows I have a really big thing for ancient Greece, and, and and within that like very large obsession, like I swear I'm a reincarnation reincarnation. Well done, brain reincarnation of Emperor Hadrian because I uh, my obsession with Greece goes so high. Uh, the only thing we differ on is he was more obsessed with Athens. I am incredibly obsessed with Sparta, and we both know which one was better because. Athens doesn't have a Sabaton song named after it. Sparta does. My other obsession about ancient Greece, or as far as I was concerned, was an ancient Greece obsession, is Alexander the Great, who in every documentary, every history book I've ever read, has been portrayed to me as Greek. But there's some people who claim differently. <laughs> Daddy's talking. Stop angrily typing in the comments on whichever side you're on. I already have a TikTok video going over this and it still gets angry comments to this day. My comments on that video still sit there and say uh, that I'm, I'm so deep in the propaganda, which sounds like a weird way of saying I've read a lot of history books. <laughs> But I do want to get into um, the fact of this video is that none of this is meant to be offensive in any way. Anything said is entirely in jest. Um, I am putting forward the evidence to you and any jokes you may, that you hear you may think, find slightly offensive, just click off. Just, there's a little, you see that back button at the top of your browser or if you're on the phone, just, just scroll down, choose another video. Um, I'm not here to offend you. If you are offended, that's not my intention. I do apologize. Let's let's dig into these claims and, and see if there is any truth to them and, and who's in the right. So first off, we're going to start off with the claim that I saw first. It was the first one I came in to my uh, comment section and it was really aggressive. And then I looked it up. Now, I, I was really disappointed um, because I've been tagged in a, a, a few um, videos that people have made uh, quoting this particular claim from a book um, and saying, aha, look, look how stupid you are. I very much apologise if I pronounce this name wrong, <laughs> but going into this. So, um, yeah, I very, I very much um, apologise if I do pronounce this author's name wrong, but a lot of the the claim that Alexander the Great was Albanian comes from Niazi Muhammadi. I really hope I got that right, and I apologise if I didn't, and I've just insulted a load of people. But uh, Muhammadi um, was financed by a bunch of businessmen living in modern day Macedonia who had links and interests in Albania. Um, which is, 
it's kind of sus <laughs> that a bunch of businessmen who would benefit slightly from being related or connected to Alexander the Great would finance this book, which, as far as I can tell, is one of the only sources that say Albania has any claim to Alexander the Great. So um, we're going to we're gonna throw this one out quick. Um, so the Greek claim is the one that most people have grown up with. Um, as far as I'm aware, it was the, is the most widely accepted, apart from a few fringe historians. Um, I can't speak of the rest of the world for the rest of the world, but in the UK, that is certainly how you learn it if you do learn it if you seek it out. So yeah, um, I, I I am gonna admit. If you've watched my TikToks, you probably already know this, and if you know me personally, you definitely already know this. I've got a slight bias towards Greece because I've been obsessed with it since I was like five. So yes, I, I am I am going to be open about my bias here, but I am going to be as unbiased as I can looking at the evidence that I have been presented with because I did take a long time researching this and all of the sources will be linked in the bio. Um, so the Macedonian claim does stem from the claimed links to the ancient kingdom of Macedonia, which to me has issues in itself that I will go briefly into. So the modern nation is, for one, different geographically. It's a little bit more northern than Macedonia was. The actual kingdom of Macedonia is inside the region of Macedonia that Greece controls. So, you know, that's fair. Not only that, the genetic makeup of the region is, is almost entirely different as well. The genetic makeup of modern modern day um, North Macedonia um, is, is a lot more um, Slavic, purely because of the Slavic migrations in the 7th century CE. So this again, makes a huge difference between the ancient Macedonia in, in 4th century CE, which was around the time of Alexander. I'm not going to go into that too much, and, and, and obviously that's that's something maybe for another video to explore more in depth. Um, but I, 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 I don't really want to start WW3, um, so, so I'm not going to go there. <laughs> It is worth noting, though, that North Macedonia um, decided to name an airport after Alexander and build him a statue. But both of these decisions were later undone. The statue was taken down. But to be fair, that's one hell of a way to state your argument, is to name an entire airport, which isn't... airports aren't small, and, and, and build a, a fat-off statue, which costs a lot of money. Um, so fair play... <laughs> So anyways, after after looking at all the claims, let's look at the evidence. Okay, so Alexander's father was known as Philip II, and you probably all know him because he was the guy who, who conquered Greece. Uh, Philip belonged to the Argiad dynasty, apologies if I've butchered that, which could allegedly trace its lineage back to Argos and even claimed to be descended from the Greek god Heracles. Yes, Disney, that is how you pronounce it. You did not put the glad into five-year-old Ryan. You may have put it into gladiator, but you didn't put it into five-year-old Ryan. It's not Hercules, it's Heracles. God damn it, Disney. Please hire me so I can work on Star Wars. Now, um, obviously, Heracles is a mythological figure, but, but Argos was and is a real place. It's also Greek. <laughs> another um, smack on the on the, another another sort of like win for the the Greek side of of, of the debate. Um, uh, looks at Philip's lineage himself, um, in which his ancestor Alexander the First of Macedon competed in the Olympics, um, so it's, which is something that you are literally only allowed to do if you were Greek. And and there was a lot of debate on whether or not he was Greek, um, but in the end it was decided that he had pr that he could prove he was a Greek, and so he had the Greek lineage. The ancient historian Herodotus also backs up this claim um, for Alexander I, um, and Herodotus is literally known as the father of history. We really going to argue with the father of history? <laughs> However, both Philip and his wife Olympias, apologies if I've got her name wrong, um, may 
have been considered Hellenes. There is some evidence to show that she was considered a Hellene, um, and so was Philip. Um, Hellene means essentially barbarian. So Philip come to the throne rather suddenly after his brother, Perdiccas. I have a very great friend in Rome called Bigus Dickus. Was unlifed by invading Illyrians. Illyrians? Illyrians? I'm going to go with Illyrians. I think that's how you do it. Um, you know, which is honestly pretty peak. F Philip, Philip would get his own back though. Um, this is Alexander the Great's dad after all. So, you know, in in three three fifty eight B C E, um, he invaded pa Paeon Pan Paeon Paeonia, Paeonia. That place, uh, which is situated in like modern Bulgaria and like the northern bit of modern Greece, um, and he, yeah, he just he just straight up backhanded the Illyrians. He would then go uh, uh, on to marry a Molossian princess from Epirus, Alexander's mother, Olympias. Anyway, so far, well, if I <laughs> if I survive being cancelled for for what I've said so far, um, let's take the time to talk about today's sponsor. Me! Um, if yeah, if you wanted to help me produce more content for this channel and for my TikTok, um, then click the link tree link in the video description. Um, that's got links to my Patreon, which has four tiers, and the the fourth, the highest tier gets your face. Uh, well, not your face, but your your Patreon username or whatever name you require. I don't quite know how that works, but you get your name on the end of my YouTube videos um, as, as a thank you, but as there's four tiers, so go wild, pick one. Um, if you don't fancy subscribing on the Patreon, um, you, you can you can check my book. It's on it's also on my link tree on my Amazon author page, The Last Witch, which is available for $5.99 on Kindle and $7.99 in paperback form. Anyways, let's get back to the video. So Alexander's mother, uh, Olympias, um, was the daughter of the Mausolean king of Epirus, um, who shared the crown with his brother. He did in fact claim to be uh, descended from an another Greek hero, Achilles. You know the guy from the Trojan War? The guy with the dodgy ankle? I, I am aware um, that it was his heel and not his ankle before. That's all the comments are. Um, I, I just changed it a bit for a joke. The, the, they traced their roots back to Neo... Neo... Potlemus, the, 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 the son of Achilles, who is also a mythological figure, and not to be uh, confused with Olympias' own father. Um, earlier, we did talk about Philip and Olympias being uh, a Hellene, um, not... Hellenic or technically Hellenic culture long story um, um, which falls down if we listen to a very well respected historical voice Aristotle who yeah is one of the most influential figures in western um, civilization he's like our Confucius um, Aristotle did believe that Epirus was the original home of the Greeks um, this is held up by the fact that we do know the, the Mycenaeans, um, or the, who inhabited Mycenaean Greece and had an entire civilization, um, they did have contact with the ancient, ancient kingdom of Epirus. Anyways, it's time to move on to our final segment. The big man himself. Alexander the Great. Born in Pella, the ancient capital of ancient Macedonia, which is situated in modern-day Greece in 356 BCE, um, Aristotle actually did come back into play here. He actually taught Alexander between the ages of 13 to 16. Um, and this would breed deep-seated interests in topics like philosophy, medicine, scientific investigation. Um, and... He would have another itch. It's an itch we, we all know very well. Although, Alexander would get a chance to scratch that itch um, uh, when Philip would go off to lead an attack against Byzantium in 340 BCE. Anyway, as the Alexander would go on to defeat the, the Maidi, a, a Thracian people, I'm hoping I pronounced that correctly, um, and in time would find himself commanding the left left wing of his father's armies um, at the Battle of Carianoria. Bit of father-son bonding time. 
Speaking of parental bonding time, Olympias would eventually get divorced from Philip um, after she didn't really vibe the fact he had multiple wives. Um, uh, and, and she would be forced to flee to Epirus, followed swiftly by Ale Alexander, um, although he would um, move over to Illyria, which is ironic given the history between Philip and the Illyrians. The other funny thing to note here is Alexander was Philip's heir. He, he definitely didn't need to flee with his mother. Uh, 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 some people say that Alexander um, and his mother were, ver were very close. Some would even say at times literally inseparable. If, if it wasn't copyrighted, if this, is, this is where I'd play Sweet Home Alabama. Um, Alexander would reconcile um, with his father uh, and return home to Macedonia um, in no way upset that his mother, whom he was very close with, as we've just stated, um, had essentially been exiled. Um, on an unrelated note, um, in 336 BCE, uh, Philip was assassinated. Uh, Alexander would catch and unlife the alleged um, murderers of Philip. The perpetrators of this ancient case of regicide were apparently the princes of Lysantis. Now, obviously, Philip had just planned an invasion of Asia, and, and, and now there was no one to do it. Oh, wait. Alexander can. Uh, apologies for digressing for, like, the millionth time, and uh, I, I'm going to try and hone that in as we move into the conclusion of this video. Um, so Alexander, the son of a Macedonian king who could trace his lineage back to the famous city of Argos and a Molossian princess who may have been closely related to the ancient Greeks. Um, all in all, the debate still rages on and you can decide for yourself. I, I personally do believe the evidence points to him being Greek. Um, or at least in a uh, capacity half and half. Um, he, at the very late, at the very least, he was a Hellenic person, and the only person who could really answer that question for you were uh, unlifed. Uh, he was unalived in 323 BCE in Babylon in modern-day Iraq. And on that terrible upset, I'll, I'll, I guess I'll see you next time. When the winged hazards arrive.